Thursday the 25th of March and 25th of March nine months to Christmas Day is the Annunciation of our Lord to the Blessed Virgin Mary so our readings and the prayers will be a little different today. Lord open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. You laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. Blessed are you sovereign God creator of heaven and earth to you be praise and glory forever. As your living word, eternal in heaven, assume the frailty of our mortal flesh. May the light of your love be born in us to fill our hearts with joy as we sing. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God. Who has clothed me with the garments of salvation and has covered me with the cloak of integrity. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth puts forth her blossom, and as seeds in the garden spring up, so shall God make righteousness and praise blossom before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest. Until her deliverance shines out like the dawn, and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your deliverance, and all rulers shall see your glory. Then you shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of God will give. You shall be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Glory, glory to, to the, the Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and shall, shall be, be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 111. Alleluia. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the faithful and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and honour, and his righteousness endures forever. He appointed a memorial for his marvellous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gave food to those who feared him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He showed his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are truth and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast for ever and ever. They are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant for ever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding of those who live by it. His praise endures for ever. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2, starting at verse 1. Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies, because I rejoice in my victory. There is no holy one like the Lord, no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are broken but the feeble gird on strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who were hungry are fat with spoil. The baron has borne seven, 
but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low. He also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit, it, inherit a seat of honour. For the pillars of the Lord of the earth are the Lord's and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness for not by might does one prevail. The Lord, his adversaries, shall be shattered. The Most High will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of his anointed. There are all sorts of occasions when um, we don't have words for our prayers. And it is very helpful to have a, a rich heritage of all sorts of prayers. So mm. we make use of the structure of morning prayer uh, each and every day. Um, and Hannah here seems to have had this amazing experience that after a long period of longing for a child she is uh, at last pregnant and well this is after she's given birth to uh, to Samuel and uh, she says for, just before this for this child I prayed and the Lord has granted me the petition that I made to him um, therefore I have lent him to the Lord as long as he lives he is given to the Lord and she took the child Samuel to uh, Sh uh, Shiloh but the prayer that she uses does seem to be one that she's taken from somewhere else it's because it is it isn't it doesn't fit exactly with her experience it is much more general and uh, it, it's like us taking a psalm and uh, some immensely important emotional experience and we take the psalm because there are things in the psalm that uh, uh, help us. Mm -hmm. But the Baron has born seven children, but she has many children is forlorn. Well, the first part of that, the Baron has born seven, mm. uh, is relevant to uh, Hannah and her expectation. Uh, and she does go on to have other children. But the, the rest of it doesn't quite fit her Situation, well, she yeah. had had to put up because she was one of two wives of El, uh, uh, Elkanah, was it? Um, yes. And uh, the other wife, Penina, uh, Penina, had had several children, and Hannah had had no children, uh, and uh, she was forever being mocked by Penina, and so talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth. Um, for the Lord is a God of knowledge and by him actions are weighed. That seems relevant as well to having been uh, uh, penning up, to having been arrogantly um, um, sort of lording it over Hannah and now Hannah has been blessed with a child. Yes, but it, it's so, not yes, just making see, it fit, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes, but you can see too. how it has resonances of her situation why she would choose if this was a set prayer like we have the Lord's Prayer mm. uh, whether this was a set prayer that she prayed but you could see why she would have prayed this yes. because there are various resonances and so our own practice of using prayers is already evidenced in the scriptures mm. um, as a way of, of doing things uh, there was the earlier moment when she was um, uh, wordlessly mouthing prayers and uh, Eli, Eli thought, thought that she was uh, drunk, drunk uh, or mad mm. or something and the form of her prayers then were presumably personal uh, right you know, exactly to do with her situation mm. there's a, a time for some prayers like that and there's time for other prayers like mm. this yeah yes yeah and it is, it is sometimes, as you say, we can't find the words to describe what we want uh, to say to God. 
and so uh, we will take a set prayer and find that yes. that's helpful. Which we might find in the scriptures yeah. or might find in the one of the service books, the service books of mm. the church. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as the Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory, we believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we have put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. Let us never be put to shame. And our New Testament reading comes from Romans chapter 5, starting to read at verse 12. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all, because all have sinned, Sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who is a type of the one who is to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died through the one man's trespass, much more, surely, have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. And the free gift is not like the effect of one man's sin, for the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If because of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more, surely, Will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. But the law came in, with the result that the trespass multiplied. But where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that, just as sin exercised dominion in death, so grace might also exercise dominion through justification, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Um, morning prayer is just one of the services that would be set uh, for today. So presumably in one of the other services today, uh, the reading would be the Magnificat, um, uh, Mary's song of praise following the vis visit from the angel. Uh, and or again, even the Annunciation story. Yes, yes. yes. But, but I was thinking Hannah's song of praise, Mary's song of praise. And again, Mary may well have taken inspiration from Hannah's prayer yes. or a previous prayer that Hannah had also known. But uh, well, it's we interesting that this is... we jump to the reason uh, for Jesus coming. Yes. Um, yeah. And mm. Paul is, is using the account in, in Genesis of the uh, uh, fall of Adam in particular, using that as a, a jumping off point. And his refrain is, uh, how much more? How much more? How much better? Mm. Uh, how much greater? 
so that uh, if, if, if one person's sin led to uh, the death, the death has spread to all because all have sinned, well, but look, this is overwhelming, this, this good news that is coming for, from, mm. from the birth of Jesus. I, I, I'm struck how difficult it is to read, how difficult it is to hear passages like this. And uh, not just because it's an extract, because if we had the whole letter, uh, then it, it, that, that too would be difficult. It, it's much easier. Well, we do have the whole letter. We do have the whole letter, but we're not going to sit and read it all. <laughs> uh, it, it is necessary sometimes to, to set out the whole of the, the letter and to follow carefully. So what is the point Paul is making and which are the things that he's saying are in support of that point? So uh, uh, he, he's saying one thing, but he's, he's heading off challenges at other points. Uh, and, and that can distract us from following the main thread of his thinking, which is how much more. But. Um, that sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin was not reckoned when there is no law. It, it, that's um, a level of detail that to, uh, to support the main argument, but uh, we can find ourselves just lost in the maze at times. Mm. Uh, so I, I often find myself casting a blank piece of paper out and just tracing through, setting out there what the argument is and how it works, because mm. uh, I need to do the homework to be able to get the uh, the message. Mm. Yes, yeah. You, the, right in this, what comes across is how much more, and grace abounded all the more. Um, uh, and uh, yes, so there was there was that. But now, how much more has God done? Yeah. And how this lovely phrase "grace abounding" yes. um, is, uh, yeah, which John Let's Bunyan see. used for his autobiography, "Grace Abounding to the Chief of Sinners." Mm. Um, uh, yeah. I, the other thing is, is if, if, if you can write the passage out or print it out, you, you can then circle certain things. So they, therefore,s if they will hang on, this must relate to previous arguments and um, to, just to get the structure of how it works. Mm. The word of life which was from the beginning. We proclaim to you. The darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. The word of life which was from the beginning. That which we heard, which we saw with our eyes and touched with our hands. We proclaim to you. For our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of life which was from the beginning we proclaim to you. And so we come to the uh, Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. The word of, of God, God, begotten of the Father before time began, humbled himself for us, and was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. To give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace glory, glory to, to the father and to the son and, and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever amen the word of god begotten of the father before time began humbled himself for us and was incarnate from the holy spirit and the Virgin Mary. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, as government comes again to discuss the extension of the COVID powers, we pray for uh, the discussions in Parliament. We pray, Heavenly Father, for uh, a real searching out of those things that would be good for our country. We pray for a, a fresh evaluation uh, of the impact of different measures on different sectors of society. And we pray that where uh, things are not being effective, they might be changed. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would give wisdom to our MPs as they look afresh at these matters. Amen. Amen. We pray too, Lord, that you would give wisdom uh, as the uh, to the, the government, to uh, all the MPs as well, uh, as uh, new uh, uh, immigration rules uh, are being discussed. Father God, we, we think of those we know who uh, are seeking asylum in this country. We think of the suffering that they've been through, Lord, and we pray that they will be dealt with, with mercy and compassion that there will be justice for those who suffer. Father God, we pray for our government that they might exercise mercy and compassion, that they might be mindful of uh, the human suffering that has led to people leaving their country, leaving their loved ones in many cases, and seeking asylum with us. Father God, we pray that these new rules will be uh, discussed and thought about and hopefully by some prayed about uh, and that uh, there will be um, uh, justice and compassion exercised uh, in, with any new rules uh, that are agreed. We pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Heavenly Father, in the aftermath of the elections in Israel, we pray for the brokering between the parties to find a way forward. We bring before you the frustration that many must feel in that land, that having a fourth election in two years, they still have a stalemate in the Knesset. And Father, we're conscious that the uh, government of Israel plays a pivotal role uh, throughout the Middle East and that the situation of Palestinians is so dependent on what's happening amongst the Israelis. Uh, Father, we pray for justice and righteousness to reign, and we bring before you the turmoil that goes on at the moment. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. And Lord, as uh, we approach the, the climax of Lent, as we approach Holy Week and Easter. We thank you, Lord, for this period of uh, being able to uh, uh, prepare, of being able to uh, contemplate. We thank you, Lord, for the Compline services uh, on Tuesday nights and the one uh, that uh, is, is still to come. And Father God, we pray that you would continue to prepare us, to teach us new things and to remind us uh, afresh of uh, what uh, uh, the true meaning of this season is. And help us, Lord, to uh, um, be able to uh, um, uh, just come before you with, with renewed uh, faith and renewed hope as uh, we look to the Holy Week and uh, wonderful celebrations that we will be able to have, um, maybe not as we, in the way that we would want, uh, but that, uh, that we will be able to celebrate together uh, the wonderful uh, message of Easter. Amen. Amen. And the collect for today. We beseech you, O Lord, pour your grace into our hearts as we have known the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
rejoicing in the presence of God here among us. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Oh, I've got a bit of editing to do. <laughs> but I can't do it yet.